So how would you describe Erlang to someone who doesn't really, well, who's not used it or isn't aware of it? I would describe it as a solution to the problem. And you know, the problem being uh, massively scalable, distributed, soft real-time systems. And it gives you the tooling to implement these systems in, in a very cost-effective way with a you know, very small code base, uh, which you know, can scale to millions of users uh, very, very easily. Um, Elixir was created to bring the power of Erlang to a wide range of developer communities, starting the, with the web, but not stopping at the web. And so right now, you know, they've made inroads into the embedded space. And you know, more recently, there's a lot of things happening in the machine learning space. So whilst you know, Erlang was there you know, to solve a technical problem, which uh, you know, telecom networks had in the, in, in the late 80s, early 90s, which you know, then you know, propagated to a much wider you know, set of problems, pretty much any system connected to the internet. Elixir, you know, focuses much more on adoption and ease of use, and so you know it brings the power of Erlang to, you know, communities who might, uh, you know, to, to web developer communities, for example, you know, through the Phoenix framework, where you just need to know a little subset of Elixir to become productive from day one, and these are luxuries you don't have with Erlang, and the same applies, you know, with nerves in the embedded space and you know the whole ecosystem. Of, of applications and, and tools which is being developed right now around machine learning, you know, starting with NX, Axon, Bumblebee, and many, many more. If I'm speaking to somebody totally new to the Erlang world, I would tell them that uh, this uh, language is very easy to get your hands on. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's going to be a little bit weird in the beginning, but then it's worth it because uh, you will be able to do a lot of uh, prototyping, you will be able to do a lot of um, things that you can show to people how the language is actually um, terrific, uh, but uh, also it, it can uh, take some time to uh, get a hold of all of the libraries that are surrounding it. Uh, but uh, the, the learning curve uh, is worth it and it makes sense at the end. If I were to speak to a new person, to Erlang, I would explain it as a very scalable language um, that simplifies life especially if you work with distributed systems and if you need to scale something. If I need to uh, describe uh, to a newcomer to, to, to learn Erlang, I would say that uh, start with the concepts uh, like the gen servers and uh, these uh, really nice predefined behaviors and also to learn about like functional programming because if you just, just come from the imp imperative world and try to apply those methods, that methods won't really work that well. So you need to, need to change a kind of perspective, you need to change your thinking. If I had to introduce Erlang to somebody that was not familiar, depends on when the person is coming from. But there are a few features to Erlang that are very characteristic and my favorite is, uh, as I always say, concurrency made easy. So in so many other um, um, technologies or frameworks, the, the traditional way to do concurrency with the logs and uh, the granularity and it's quite a complex topic. There is like a lot of thinking and a lot of things that can go wrong and that is a solved problem in Erlang. Concurrency scales forever, it's easy, you face different problems. But that is my favorite feature and that I think is a great selling point, something to get started with.